Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss some more concept from the shear strength of soil. So in the previous lecture I have discussed what is the shear strength of soil. So the soil shows some resistance against the shear stress, and that maximum resistance is called the shear strength of soil. So in this lecture I am going to discuss. what are the mechanism behind the shear resistance in a soil and then i am going to discuss mohr coulomb theory mohr coulomb failure criteria so to understand the mechanism of shear resistance you have to understand the shear failure criteria in the soil so we call the shear failure of a soil when soil start to slide over each other soil to start deform deform so we call it the shear failure so the relative sliding between the particles is the major factor which contribute to the deformation in a soil so deformation in a soil is happening due to the sliding between the soil solid soil particles so shear resistance between the particles at their contact points so shear resistance of soil is due to the shear resistance between the particles at their contact points so at these contact points force of attraction exist between the surface of atoms of the particles and the total shear resistance is the function of both strength of each bonds as well as the number of such bonds i'm talking about the bonds at these contact points see the more number of contact points means the more means soil strength will increase if it's it's a soil has a less number of contact points means the soil has a less shear strength and it depends upon the strength of each bonds also if a strength of each bonds is less then it will give the result in less shear strength of a soil if a strength of each bond is more so it will give the more shear strength of soil and this number of contact points decrease or increase it also depend upon the what are the normal force normal stress acting at that surface or at that plane right if you will increase the normal stress or normal force so the number of this contact point will increase and it will give the more shear strength of soil it will increase the shear strength of soil inversely we can say if the num if the normal force will decrease then number of contact points will decrease and it will give the less shear resistance or it will decrease the shear strength of a soil it will decrease the shear strength of soil so this phenomena you can understand by example but in some cases also when you will see in the further lecture when the normal stress is zero normal stress stress is zero in that case also soil is showing some resistance against the shear so that shear resistance of soil is by due to the due to the cohesion due to its cohesion so that cohesion is called the true cohesion so that that thing also we'll see in the coming lecture so this mechanism you can understand by for example so i am showing in the figure there is a two solid blocks or contact with each other there is a n is a normal force that is perpendicular to the surface of contact and there is a tangential force or a stress we can say tau is parallel to the surface of contact so what's happening when you will increase the tangential stress then resistance will increase again you will increase the tangential stress then resistance will the resistance will increase so when the soil block sorry when the block of this solid block will begin to slide that time we can say the shear stress or shear force is it is a maximum value 
for that maximum value we can write tau max is equal to mu times normal mu into normal where mu is the coefficient of friction or any is the normal force in the stress we will talk about then you can write stress so this uh, phenomena we can relate to the soil also so in the second figure there is a two soil particles or contact to each other there is a normal force there is a tangential force and in the soil you can write tau max is equal to n tan phi you can write tan phi is equal to tau max by n you can, we can apply the trigonometry also so if you will relate the frictional resistance when the, uh, to the solid blocks so mu you can write tan phi in the case of soil mu is in the case of solid block or tan phi in the case of soil so where the phi is the angle of internal friction where phi is angle of internal friction so now we can say that in the case of soil the resistance against the sliding is the function of both normal force and the angle of internal friction or we can say it depends upon the both normal force and the angle of internal friction so in the case of sand or in the case of other granular material so there is a sliding friction as well as there is a rolling friction so the total shear resistance is the function of both the strength of each bond as well as the number of such bonds and the con con this is talking about the bonds at the contact points at the contact points of solid particles of soil if the normal force acting on the particle increase the total shear resistance will increase obviously so this is the figure uh, you can there is the first figure before the shear so what is happening before the shear and the after shear you can relate this two figure so before the shear failure you can see there is a line of contact points of the particles is not horizontal so because of it is not horizontal it is showing some interlocking some it is showing some ex extra resistance so that is called the calling that is called the rolling friction so once soil get fail after shear failure the second figure you can see that line of contact point is more or less horizontal means the interlocking is break interlocking is break due to the rearrangement of soil particles in the second case after the shear failure the soil particles rearrange so when the sand there is a sand and the relative density of sand is high it is compacting very highly so in that case interlocking phenomena is also there and due to due to the interlocking phenomena it is so some extra resistance against the shear stress are you getting a point okay so interlocking phenomena is there in the sand which is contribute the presumably the frictional resistance so in the case of sand when the relative density is high it is so some rolling friction with addition to the sliding friction it is showing some mohr coulomb theory this is also i have discussed in the previous lecture the shear failure occur in the soil by the slippage of particle due to the shear stresses so whatever the shear stress is induced on the failure plane that is also depend upon the normal stress means while it's getting failed by the shear but that shear stress is also depend upon the normal stress so we can say we can say that according to the mohr given the some statement that failure is caused by the critical combination of the normal stress and shear stress Okay, and this 
shear stress at the failure is, all, is a function of normal stress and that we can denote by tau f is equal to function of sigma. Tau f, tau f, tau represent the shear stress and f represent the failure. So tau f means shear stress at failure. We can write tau f is equal to s because the whatever the shear stress at failure, it gives the strength of a soil. So we can write that tau f is equal to s is equal to function of sigma. So this uh, critical combination we can draw, we can uh, plot on the diagram and a plot can be made between the shear stress and a normal stress sigma at failure. And we know about the Mohr circle that every coordinate of the Mohr circle it gives the all possible combination of shear stress at, and normal stress. Right? So we have to find the critical one. Which one is the critical one? So which point on the Mohr circle is critical? So in the previous lecture also I have discussed that whatever the points or whatever the straight line that is touch on the Mohr circle, it's give the critical, critical one. It gives the critical stress and uh, normal stress. So this straight line is called failure envelope. So at every point on the failure envelope, just remember I am saying the failure envelope, not more circle. So every point on the failure envelope, it gives the critical combination of shear stress and normal stress. If you will change the shear stress, you will get the different normal stress or if you will change the normal stress, you will get the different shear stress at failure. This uh, straight line I am showing here, but this can be curved for different kind of soil. But presumption we have taken the, this is the straight line. And that is straight line that is failure envelope, it touches the circle at a point D. And the point D gives the critical combination of shear stress and normal stress. Are you getting my point? So a line is draw from the B and it's cut the horizontal axis or sigma axis at a point B. So this PD line or PD plane is represent the failure plane. This PD plane is represent the failure plane. Here the point C that is the center of Mohr circle. Draw another figure. Particle intercept is shown by C that is the cohesion. An angle with, with the horizontal is phi that is the angle of internal friction. So I have discussed about the angle of obliquity. So maximum angle of obliquity when a line touch the circle, touch the Mohr circle. So it gives the maximum angle of obliquity and that is denoted by the beta max. So here this dotted line it touch the circle at a point D. So that angle will give the maximum angle of obliquity. So whatever the combination of shear stress and normal stress below the failure envelope, that will be in a stable condition. Means any combination you are applying on the soil, then soil will not fail. So all uh, that point below the mod, which is lying below the failure envelope, that is stable condition. And whatever the point above the failure envelope, that is not possible. Why it is not possible? Suppose in the laboratory you are performing some test and you, you are applying some normal stress and you are checking the, uh, you are finding the shear stress. So what, ha what will happen? So when you will apply the critical normal stress, so some result will come shear stress and the soil will get fail. Means you cannot get the higher value. Means a point which is lying above the failure envelope can, will not exist. That's why I have written, uh, I have crossed this, uh, the cross, uh, I have shown in the, uh, in the figure by cross ma, cross sign. So it means uh, that uh, whatever the point which is lying above the failure envelope, that is not possible. Let's calculate the shear strength or shear stress in terms of cohesion and in terms of phi. So first extend this failure envelope and we'll cut the sigma axis. So this vertical intercept on the shear stress 
with C that is cohesion of a soil. Angle is phi and this BD line is showing the shear strength of a soil. That is showing the tau F shear stress at tailwell or shear strength of soil. Both are the same thing. So apply some trigonometry. So parallelly we can write and this is this uh, is the sigma normal stress. So we can write C and by trigonometry we can write sigma tan phi. So PD we can we will add both the things so we can get the shear strength C plus sigma tau sigma tan phi. So now we can say that shear strength of soil is a linear function linearly vary with the linear function of sigma linear linear, linear function of normal stress where c is the cohesion that is a constant for soil for you take the soil sample so c you have to take the c means that is the cohesion cohesion is the like property of soil uh, soil particles which hold the same kind of molecular same kind of soil particles it's all together and uh, sigma is the normal stress phi is the angle of internal friction so we can write the shear strength a c c plus sigma ten phi right are you getting my point we have just applied some trigonometric rule and we get this result so what is happening uh, for further study this C and this uh, C, uh, normal stress and uh, phi that is not effective means in most of the cases in the research uh, that normal stress was not eff uh, effective on the plane whatever the we are working on the some failure plane so it has it has seen that that like you know that uh, on the failure plane some effective stress is acting not normal stress so this uh, whatever the equation given by the Mohr that is revised by the Terzaghi and is, uh, with respect to this cohesion and the sigma and that this phi it take the effective value of it means it um, Terzaghi give the new uh, equation that is the C strength of soil that is C dash plus sigma dash or sigma bar sigma bar is showing the effective stress tan phi that is the effective angle of internal friction so that is also called revised column of revised more column equation that is revised more column equation so further in the coming lecture we will use the revised more column equation not whatever uh, more given the previously what was given the result so we cannot uh, write we cannot use the total stress we will use the effective stress so, shear strength of soil is equal to the C plus sigma dash, that is the effective stress, tan phi dash. In the next lecture, I am going to discuss the various types of test to measure the shear strength of soil. So, before discuss the different types of test, we have to discuss about the drainage condition and the mode of application of shear force. So there are two stages which are going to use to perform a test, to perform a shear test. The first one is the consolidation stage and second one is the shear stage. So consolidation stage in which the normal stress or confining pressure is applied to the specimen and it is allowed to consolidate. In means we will give time to specimen to it, 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 is, it, it fully consolidate right means pore water pressure will increase and it will reach to zero so we will wait for some time right in the second stage that is shear stage so in this stage we are applying the normal stress on deviated stress on the specimen to sear it so we will apply the shear stress and soil will sear it so depending upon the drainage condition, there are three types of taste as explained and the three types of taste we call and that is important, okay? You have to uh, just uh, remember all these types. So the first one is the unconsolidated and undrained condition we call EV test or we call kit test or we call Q test. 
so by name you can get some you can uh, get some idea like on consolidation mean mean it is not consolidated undrained means it is not drained right so unconsolidated undrained taste so in this uh, type what we do we do not allow to drain the water in the consolidation stage and we 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 also not allowed to in the second stage also that is shear stage so that is called the and we are not giving time to consolidate we are not uh, giving time to uh, pour so, so it put pour water pressure with zero so so with this stage we can perform it within uh, uh, in a few minutes right so that's why uh, it's called a quick test suppose you will give the time for consolidation so it will take some time but in this is in this type we are not giving time means for to consolidation this is the unconsolidation untrained condition so this is this that's why this is very quick test and we can perform this test in a, in a few minutes right second one is the consolidated undrained condition we in short we can call cu test or r test right the first one is the quick test the last one is the slow test so q r s so r falls in alphabetically falls between the q and s so we can call as a r test also right so it is famous by cu test okay so what we do drainage is permitted in the first stage because we we do uh, we are allowing the uh, soil sample to consolidate it. so if you will not allow to drainage how you will consolidate means pore water pressure will decrease the way we allow the drainage then pore water pressure will decrease and then it will be consolidated in the second stage that is a shear stage drainage is not permitted means we are not allowing to drain it right so uh, it takes some uh, time compared to the first one so that is called the r test okay the last one is the consolidated drain condition in short we call cd test or drain test or slow test so in the first stage that is the consolidation stage drainage allowed we got soil it we are giving time to soil to consolidate it so it will take some time and the second stage also we are allowing drainage so it will take also it will take time means pore water pressure will uh, will decrease and it will reach to the zero are you getting a point so we are giving a lot of time compared to the above two so that's why it is called a slow test it is a slow test so mode of application of shear force so that is uh, shear force in the shear test is applied either by increasing the shear displacement or we are applying the shear strain at a given rate means at a constant rate or by increasing the shear force at a given rate or at, at a constant rate so that's why we name as a strain control test and a stress control test by name you can get some idea a strain a strain matlab shear displacement a control test means that is constant that is control means constant at a given rate so the rate of increase of the shear strain is kept constant so most uh, in the most of the instrument you will see that is the strain control instrument and we we have performed by using that instrument that is a strain control test right and it is very to uh, it is very easy to use that okay the second one that is the stress control test a stress that is a shear stress control means constant means like given rate so in this case the rate of increase of shear force is maintained constant and this is we rarely use right and it's required some skill to use that okay so generally uh, we use the strain control test so now you have some idea about the strain control test and a stress control this is the mode of application of shear force right so uh, these are the some difference that i have taken so thank you